Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hoop. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we're starting a brand new two-part series entitled Sleeping with the Enemy. This is part one and it's entitled Jehoshaphat. Now Jehoshaphat, although a good king and honored God, he got under bed with the enemy and it nearly cost him his life. Today, many Christians join forces with the enemy, not even realizing that it could cost them their lives. At the very least, it could cost them their freedoms. Some Christians identify with race first, or they identify with ethnicity, or some political party. Then they identify with Christianity. But that is not the way it ought to be, my brothers and sisters. We identify with God and with His people first and foremost. We are Christians first. We identify with God and then everything else next. Neither do we make ungodly alliances out of fear or societal pressures. We do not let political correctness separate us from our God as Jehoshaphat almost did with King Ahab. Let us turn our attention to our, our, our scripture found in 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1 through 3. Now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor, and he made a marriage alliance with Ahab. After some years, he went down to Ahab in Samaria, and Ahab killed an abundance of sheep and oxen for him and for the people who were with him, and induced him to go up against Ramoth Gilead. Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? He answered, I am as you are, my people as your people. We will be with you in war. The scripture said that King Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor. Why do you suppose he had those great riches and honor? I'll tell you why. Because he, his heart followed faithfully after his God. Now begs the question, how did his heart follow after God? The concise answer can be found in 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 3. Nevertheless, some good is found in you, for you destroyed the Ashtoreth out of the land, and have set your heart to seek God. And as the scripture says, let every matter be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Therefore, turn with me, please, to 2 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 3 through 6. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals. He sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the practices of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat, and he had great riches and honor. His heart was courageous in the ways of the Lord, and furthermore, he took the high places and Asherim out of Judah. Jehoshaphat sought the Lord, his God, and he was obedient to his commandments. He refused to be led astray by false idols and demonic practices like child sacrifice. He kept witchcraft out of his home. He kept witchcraft out of the territory of Judah, his kingdom. He sent men of God, priests and teachers into the land of Judah to teach them the ways of God. Verse 6 says that his heart was courageous in the ways of the Lord. He did not permit worship in the high places. He expelled the ashram out of, out of Judah. And because he did this, the Lord, his God, blessed him and blessed him richly. Look at what the Lord, or how the Lord blessed him in 2 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 10 through 12. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were around Judah. And they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and silver for tribute. And the Arabians also brought him 7,700 rams and 7,700 goats. And Jehoshaphat grew steadily greater. He built in Judah fortresses and store cities. No one dared make war against Jehoshaphat. 
Even his enemies brought him tribute. For the Lord his God made him greater and greater. However, although he did not practice or believe in the ways of his counterpart, Israel, he did join with them. He did cast his vote in in support of them. People do the same thing today. They don't believe in abortion, which is child sacrifice, but will get into bed with the abortionists and with Planned Parenthood and will support and defend them tooth and nail. They may not believe in homosexuality, but will vote and support those who create laws and legalize and normalize the practice. Just like Jehoshaphat got into bed with Ahab, a man God described as doing more evil than all who were before him. People sometimes cannot see the evil because they identify with the evildoer. Or they overlook the evil because of the financial support that they receive. Even when a deliverer is sent to them, they reject him because they have bought into the lie. Look at what Jehoshaphat did out of fear for self-preservation. 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor, and he made a marriage alliance with Ahab. God was blessing King, King Jehoshaphat in all that he did. He had no need to get into bed with King Ahab. He had no need to make that type of alliance, and yet he saw it necessary to forge a marriage alliance with him. Ahab was a very wicked king, a godless king, a spoiled brat who had no fear or regard for God or man, as plain to see when his wife Jezebel killed Naboth. She murdered Naboth, and Ahab gladly took possession of his vineyard. But fear is the opposite of faith. And fear will make you do unreasonable things. When fear sets in, it will cause you to act without thinking. And self-preservation then becomes the name of the game. The scriptures often warns against, uh, against fear. The Bible plainly states, fear not, for I am with you. I will fight for you. I will defend you. Yet, King Jehoshaphat acted in fear, took matters into his own hands, and got the granddaughter of King Omri, a wicked man, a, a devil worshiper, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, two more wicked people, to be the bride of his son, thus forming an alliance between the two nations. The problem with ungodly alliance is this. It takes you farther than you want to go and calls you to make decisions without realizing that it is against God's earthly will for your life. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 2 through 3. After some years, he went down to Ahab in Samaria. And Ahab killed an abundance of sheep and oxen for him and for the people who were with him and induced him to go up against Ramoth Gilead. Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? He answered him, I am as you are, my people as your people. We will be with you in war. Notice, please, that Ahab did not go up to Jehoshaphat, but rather Jehoshaphat went down to Ahab. Please understand that sin is not attracted to godliness, but rather godliness is distracted by sin. Sin will pull and pull and drag you down and drag you down until you are where it is. It will cause you to lose your mind and your sense of direction. So after flattering Jehoshaphat with such a great feast in his honor, with the slaughter of an abundance of sheep and an abundance of oxen and all the merriment, Ahab induces Jehoshaphat to go to war with him. And right away, Jehoshaphat says, Yes, yes, 
Of course I will go. My people are as your people. I myself will lead the charge. Now, this word induced is the same word used in 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 25. There was none who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord like Ahab, whom Jezebel, his wife, incited. None. Also in, in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1, Then Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel. According to Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible, the word means to lead by the hand. Jehoshaphat let himself be led by the hand by one so wicked as Ahab because he made an alliance with him. He got in bed with the enemy. And look at 1 Kings chapter 20 verse 25. There was none who sold himself to do what was evil. So much evil that there was none that sought himself or sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord like Ahab. And who did it? His wife, Jezebel. Just as his wife took him by the hand and led him into all kinds of evil and wickedness, so Ahab took the unsuspected hand of Jehoshaphat and led him into war, a war he should not have been a part of. Right now, people are letting the news media, fake news, and the communist experts take them by the hand and lead them into a social war. The only problem is, just like Uriah carried his own death sentence in an unsealed envelope in his own hands, so these people are carrying their own death sentences in their own hands. Do they suppose that they alone will be spared? A communist regime has no regard for young or for old. It does not value life, period. Life has no value to them. Look around. Look at all the needless suffering. To what end? The poor and the middle class are being wiped out. And the wealth of the nations is being transferred to the already ultra-rich individuals. When one of our long-time representatives can stand up in an interview and say that China is one of the freest democracies, something is wrong. Where are they taking us by the hand? Where are they dragging us to? Wherever it is, I'm telling you, it is not good. Trust me, the direction that we're heading in is not the direction we will want to be at in the end. Instead of seeking the face of their God, men and women of God jump right into bed with the same enemy that has taken down the whole world. With all of the freedoms we enjoy here in America, we are taught and even encouraged to hate our own country and even believe that it is the worst country in the world while living free and enjoying millions millions of dollars and buying all the comforts of life some still hate America why would they do that they're programmed to kill patriotism a divided people are a conquered people a conquered people are an enslaved people but united people stand united we overcome all obstacles What, do, what we do not cherish will be taken away from us. Just like the servant who had one talent and hid it in the ground and it was taken away from him. So will our freedom be taken away from us if we do not protect it, if we do not value it, if we do not stop sleeping with the enemy. So King Ahab entices King Jehoshaphat into going to war with him. 
Jehoshaphat agrees without first seeking the Lord. He just jumps up and he says, I am as you are, my people as your people. We will be with you in war. Jehoshaphat just blurts it out without even thinking. And then, like a second thought, he says in 2 Chronicles chapter 8, verse 4, inquire first of the Lord. Inquire first the word of the Lord. Jehoshaphat, you already gave your word. You already agreed to be as one in war. You already joined up. You already got in bed with the wicked. How can you go back on your word now? You gave your word. So, in compliance, Ahab brought forward 400 prophets who prophesied victory and success for the king. But Jehoshaphat, still had some semblance of the spirit of discernment, felt like something wasn't right here. Something was wrong. He knew something wasn't exactly right, so he said, is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? Jehoshaphat had gotten into bed with the enemy with his eyes wide open. He knew that these 400 men were not speaking from God. And when the real prophet of God came and spoke the vision which God had shown him, it was prophesied disaster, it was prophesied gloom, it was prophesied that King Ahab would die in that battle. Defeat and death was the verdict. Yet Jehoshaphat ignored all the warnings. He discarded all the true prophecies and he went with King Ahab into that war anyway. Ahab had convinced him to go into war wearing his royal garments while he himself would go in disguise. It's not exactly what's happening today. The real enemy is in disguise. They are hidden safely inside their ivory towers. Their children are not being slaughtered. Their families are not being torn apart. Their lives are not being ravished. It's the little people on the streets who are fighting and slaughtering each other, prodded on by the elite. They stand back and gloat as businesses are vandalized. Lives are destroyed. The poor keep getting poorer. The proof is always in the pudding. Just think, is your life better today than 20 years ago? How about 15 years ago? How about 10 years ago or five years ago? How about just two years ago? When the Arameans saw Jehoshaphat, they immediately thought that it was the king of Israel. They thought it was Ahab because they were told to fight with no one else but the king of Israel. So when they saw the royal guards, they thought, ha, ah, this must be the king of Israel. And so they began to chase him, trying to kill him, trying to capture him. But when he cried out, when Jehoshaphat cried out, they turned and left off chasing him because they realized this is not the king of Israel. So Jehoshaphat's life was only narrowly spared. It's time for us to cry out to Jesus. That is the only way we will be spared. Cry out and live. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. Turn to him and live. So to make a long story short, Jehoshaphat, or sorry, to make a long story short, Ahab was killed in the battle just as Micaiah, the prophet of God, had prophesied. To Jehoshaphat's relief, he made it back home to Jerusalem with his life. He thought he had escaped unscathed. But God said, hey, Jehoshaphat, what are you doing sleeping with the enemy? Look at what the scripture says in 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 1 through 3. When Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, returned safely to his palace in Jerusalem, Jehu the seer, the son of Hanani, went out to meet him and said to the king, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this, the wrath of the Lord is on you. There is, however, some good in you, for you have rid the land of the Asherah poles and have set your heart on seeking God. 
God did not see Israel as their brother, though they were. God did not see Israel as the same ethnic people as Judah, though they were. God saw Israel as the one who hated the Lord because they had abandoned him for other gods. God asks, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? In today's context, the, the Lord is asking that same question. Should you help get into office those who make unjust laws? Should you support those who truly oppress the poor and steal the wealth of the nations? Should you vote for those who take innocent lives? Should you throw your hand in with those who are trying to put God out of the country and bring in the gods and goddesses of sexuality and neo-paganism? Oh, may God find good in us that his wrath may not be kindled upon us for sleeping with the enemy. May he open our eyes to see. May he open our ears to hear. May we see real truth the truth of God. So in closing, let me just quickly tell you what this ungodly union got Jehoshaphat's descendants. Jehoshaphat got a woman by the name of Athaliah as a wife for his son and heir, Je Jehoram. After his death, his son Jehoram took the throne of his father. And as soon as the throne was firmly established in his hand. As soon as he was firmly established as king, he killed all his brothers, the sons of his father, Jehoshaphat. He also killed those officials who were loyal to his father. The scripture tells us he did much evil in the eyes of the Lord and walked according to the kings of Israel. Why? Because he had married the king of Israel, Ahab, and Jezebel's daughter. He worshipped their gods just as they did. The other countries around him who, who used to bring tribute to his father Jehoshaphat made war on him and killed all his sons except for his youngest. They killed all of Jehoshaphat's grandsons for one. Eventually, Jehoram died. He died a horrible, painful death. His bowels came out. And his youngest son, Ahaziah, reigned in his place. Look at what 2 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 3 says about Ahaziah, Jehoshaphat's grandson. He too followed the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother encouraged him to act wickedly. His mother, Athaliah, King or Omri's grand, uh, granddaughter, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, his mother encouraged him, even led him by the hand into serving other gods and forsaking the god of his ancestors just as his grandfather Ahab had done. Ahaziah was killed by Jehu whom God had anointed to bring judgment on the house of Ahab. And since he was Ahab's descendant, he too was killed. Upon his death, his mother Athaliah immediately seized control of the kingdom. She seized control of the throne and began eliminating the heirs to the throne. Anyone who, who had a claim or could have a claim on the throne, she eliminated. In other words, she began killing the rest of Jehoshaphat's descendants, the rest of his family, his grandsons, and his other family members who might have the claim on the throne. Her husband had already killed his sons, his own brothers. Sleeping with the enemy has its consequences. Wake up before it's too late. 
Wake up before the spirit of Athaliah seized control of the throne and begin to kill your descendants. Let me ask you, have you been sleeping with the enemy? Would you like to know how? Would you like to know the true, your true ally, Jesus? Would you like to know Jesus who died for you? What's more, the Jesus who died to give you life and life more abundantly. Would you like to accept him today as Lord and Savior? Here's how. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for sleeping with the enemy. Give me eyes to see. Give me ears to hear. Give me a heart to believe. Lord, let truth reign in my spirit. Help me to live for you. I accept your free gift of life. I accept your free gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for it's in your name we pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You know, as I always do, I always encourage you, get yourself a Bible. It's nothing like reading God's Word. Read the Scriptures every day. Get a highlighter and highlight the promises. Promises you can stand on. Highlight His Word. Those that encourages you. And hide it away in your heart because one day, the Scriptures are going to be taken away from us. And the only Scriptures we'll have is those that we have hidden in our hearts. Join a Bible-believing church. One who still believes that there's a right way and there's a wrong way. Do not join one of those progressive churches that believes you can live any old way. You can believe any old thing and you're good. God requires holiness. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Get rid of the ashram. Stop sleeping with the enemy. And when the Lord comes back, He will find you doing what it is you should be doing. And He'll take you to be with Him, that where He is, there you shall be always. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay.